Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Thursday, September 22nd, 2022. Today I'm going to recap the baseball games from yesterday. Look ahead to today's games. We have college football and NFL tonight. We'll go over the games and I'll make picks. And then we have the President's Cup to discuss. NHL, I'll paint my flag. Mass Singer and Survivor, News and Notes and Best Bet. We'll start with Major League Baseball. We'll talk about the results from yesterday really quickly and look ahead to another busy day today in the sport. Nats over to Braves, 3-2. Brewers over to Mets, 6-0. Reds over to Red Sox, 5-1. Cubs over to Marlins, 4-3. Astros over to Rays, 5-2. Phils over to Blue Jays, 4-3-10 on a walk-off single by Matt Vierling. Best Bet's a winner. Orioles over the Tigers, 8-1. Yankees over the Pirates, 14-2. Rangers over the A's, 7-2. Guardians over the White Sox, 8-2. Royals over the Twins, 5-2. Giants over the Rockies, 6-1. A's over the Mariners, 2-1. Padres over the Cardinals, 1-0. And the Dodgers lose at home again to the Diamondbacks by a score of 6-1. Now I look ahead to today's games. Um, 2 o'clock, you have the Angels at the Rangers. Michael Lorenzen and Martin Perez. Um, the Rangers are definitely favored because Martin Perez has had the year of his life. Um, baseball, there it is. Um, minus 146, Angels are plus 124 over under 8, overs minus 106, unders minus 114. Angels plus 1 half is minus 172, Rangers minus 1 half is plus 142. I'm going to go with the under 8, minus 114, I think Martin Perez pitches well again. Twins Royals. Josh Winder and Jonathan Heasley. Twins minus 126. Royals plus 18. Over under 8. Overs minus 114. Unders minus 106. Twins minus 1F is plus 126. Royals plus 1F is minus 152. Over. Over, over, over. 3 o'clock. Giants, Rockies. Josh, or John Brabia and Jose Urena. Giants minus 116. Rockies minus 102. Over under 11F. Overs minus 104. Unders minus 118. Giants minus 1F is plus 130. Rocks plus 1F is minus 156. I think the Giants are undervalued as a favorite at minus 116, so I'll lay it. 3.30, Mariners A's. George Kirby and Adrian Martinez. Mariners minus 240. A's plus 198. Over under 7. Overs minus 122. Under receiving money. Mariners minus 1F is minus 137. A's plus 1F is plus 114. I'm going with A's run line plus 1F at plus 114. 4 o'clock, Cards Pods. Jack Flaherty and Joe Musgrove. Padres minus 146. Cardinals plus 102. Or plus 124, over under 8. Over is minus 102, and there's minus 120. Cards plus 1F is minus 70. Padres minus 1F is plus 140. Um, tough one for this. I'm going to go with Padres first half run line. Minus a half at minus 102. 630, Cubs Pirates. Hayden Wisniewski and Mitch Keller. Cubs minus 102. Pirates minus 116. Over under 7F. Over is minus 112. Under is minus 108. Cubs minus 1F is plus 158. Pirates plus 1F is minus 192. Cubs favored on the run line. Pirates favored on the money line. I'm going with the Cubs. They're 50.1 compared to the 49.9. So I'm going to go Cubs minus 102 against Pittsburgh. Brewers, Reds. Brandon Woodruff and Hunter Green. Brewers minus 156. Reds plus 132. Over under 7F. Over is minus 115. Under is minus 105. Brewers minus 1F is plus 105. Reds plus 1F is minus 126. For this game, I'm going to go with the over, but I don't feel good about it. Blue Jays Rays, Jose Barrios and JT Chargoyas. Pretty much a battle for... Um, uh, they're the winner's going to try in this game because you want to... Void um the Astros potentially in the second round. But you rather play the Guardians or because three plays six and then four plays five. So these two will be playing each other. So maybe the loser tries to tank.
to try to avoid them, avoid the Astros. Blue Jays minus 30, race plus 110, over under 7F, overs minus 118, unders minus 104. Blue Jays minus 1F is plus 126, race plus 1F is minus 152. I'm going raise run line, or I'm sorry, money line plus 110, they'll win outright to 58.6% according to ESPN Analytics. Wrong team's favorite in that game. 7 o'clock, Astros at the Orioles. Justin Verlander and Kyle Bradish. Astros minus 200. Orioles plus 168 over under 7. Overs minus 105. Hunters minus 115. Astros minus 1F is minus 114. Orioles plus 1F is minus 105. I'm going to go with the under. On Fox at 715, Braves Phillies. Max Freight and Ranger Suarez. This game should only be on Fox in Atlanta and Philadelphia markets for obvious reasons. Braves minus 148, Phillies plus 126, over under 7F, overs minus 106, unders minus 114. Braves minus 1F is plus 118, Phillies plus 1F is minus 142. I'm going with the under. And here we go. On Fox, the game of the night. For one reason only, Red Sox, Yankees, Michael Waka, Jameson Tyone, Aaron Judge with the opportunity to tie or even pass Roger Maris for the single season home runs. Yankees minus 162, Red Sox plus 136, over under 8, minus 110 each way. Red Sox plus 1F is minus 152, Yankees minus 1F is plus 126. What I think they're going to do is that they're going to cut in the, uh, every at bat that Judge has in that Phillies Braves broadcast. For this game, I'm going with the over. Um, I know Walk has pitched well against the Yankees this year, but um, I just think that uh, Yanks are motivated. Their offense, I think, I saw a little something. Even though granted, the Pirates are much worse than the Red Sox, but I think that uh, the Red Sox pitching is bad. So therefore, the over is the pick. Eight o'clock. You have the Guardians at the White Sox. Talk about a fifty-fifty. Shane Bieber, Johnny Cueto. I don't think I've ever seen 50-50 on ESPN Analytics. Let's see if it's minus 108, minus 108. Nope. Guardians minus 142. White Sox plus 120. Over under 7. Over is minus 118. Under is minus 104. Guardians minus 1F is plus 126. White Sox plus 1F is minus 152. Numbers that you take the White Sox. So I'm taking them plus 120 um, as a dog. Um, yeah, I don't think they're playing for much, but they'll win the night. And then last but not least, 10 o'clock, you have the Z-backs at the Dodgers. Zach Gallen, Julio Urias. Dodgers minus 215, D-backs plus 180, over under 7, overs minus 114, unders minus 106. D-backs plus 1F is minus 122, Dodgers minus 1F is plus 102. Um, Urias has been incredible this year. And so is Zach Gallen. Gallen's been on a great run. The pick's the under, minus 106. Okay, now move on to college football. Um, we have three games to talk about that are being played tonight. First up, at 7 o'clock on ESPN, you have West Virginia at Virginia Tech. Or 7.30, my bad. Um, West Virginia is a 2.5 point favorite. Total is 15.5. Um, I love Virginia Tech. Um, West Virginia lost the freaking Kansas, for crying out loud. I don't know why they're favored in this game. Um but I know they almost beat Pitt. I understand that. But they lost to Kansas. I understand that they probably should have beaten Kansas. But their defense is just awful. I Give me Virginia Tech getting the 2.5. And, and they're going to win outright. They're plus 110. On the money line, too. And I have a slight lean to the... Or not a slight lean. A big lean to the over as well. But Virginia Tech is the pick. 7.30 on ESPN2. You have Coastal Carolina at Georgia State. Um, Coastal's a two and a half point favorite too, and the total is sixty one and a half. Um, I'm gonna lay the two and a half with Coastal Carolina. Um, they're a better team than Georgia State, I think. Um, so give me Coastal Carolina minus two and a half against Georgia State, and last but not least, eight thirty. On the Big Ten Network, you have Chattanooga against Illinois. Um, Illinois is favored by 18.5 points. And the total 
is 39. Um, give me Chattanooga getting all those points. Um, I don't think Illinois is that good of a team. Um, I think they might be looking ahead a little bit. I do like the over two. So give me Chattanooga getting all those points at Illinois. All right, Thursday night football. Um, not exactly as big time as a quarterback matchup as last week, but that's um might be an understatement because it's Mitch Trubisky and the Steelers against Jacoby Brissett and, and the Browns. Um, I'm gonna quickly check the injury report to see some actives and actives. Um. So, Miles Garrett, probable. Harrison Bryant, probable. Joel Batonio, probable. Good news um, right there. Um, Jack Conklin, questionable. We'll see. And then Pittsburgh, obviously, no Watt. Um, we knew that going in. Um, Minka Fitzpatrick's questionable now with the leg injury. Ooh, that's brutal. That is absolutely brutal. If he's out, Pittsburgh has zero chance. Like, and I have them projected as a favorite in this game, too. Well, they're projected as a favorite because of um, Jacoby Brissett. I know Mitch Trubisky's not very good either, and TJ Watt's out. But the gap between Watson and... Brissett is larger than the gap between Trubisky and Roethlisberger from last year. So, and the Browns do have some, like, Conklin, that's a brutal loss too. I mean, like, I think they could still win without Conklin, but I don't think the Steelers can win without Minka Fitzpatrick. But they they need him to play. Devin Bush is going to play. That's good. Um, So, my projection. So, if Fitzpatrick misses the game, this goes down to Steelers 3, total 44 and 19 twentieths. But my projection is 4 and 44 and 19 twentieths. And right now, the Browns are in this game favored by 3.5. And, and the line went down. How'd the line go down? Maybe they think that Conklin's not playing. Total 38.5. Um, so I actually have a pretty big edge on the over, too. So I have a six, I guess almost a six and a half point edge on the over. And then on the Steelers. So a seven and a half point edge on the Steelers. It'd be six and a half if Fitzpatrick weren't the play. But I hate to do this, but I'm going to take the fact that they went down the three and a half. That's a little weird. And it was five the other day. Everybody's betting Pittsburgh. I'm going to take the Steelers because I just think Brissett is just due for a bad game. And I think the Steelers are going to win. I think it's going to be a super duper low scoring game. I think that um, the over will easily eclipse. Steelers spread and over is a really fun same game parlay. And maybe at any time touchdown, you throw in like a, a Najee Harris or something like that. But let's bank on uh, Minka Fitzpatrick playing. Eat Mike Crow if he doesn't play and the Browns kill the Steelers and Brissett looks like a superstar. But I'm going with the Steelers. I think they're going to win. I'm going to say Fitzpatrick, please. And the Steelers will be 2-1 and one on the season after looking pathetic against the New England Patriots. All right, now we'll move on to the President's Cup. Um, it's going to be an interesting tournament. Um it's about to get underway. Um, international team roster, the captain is Trevor Immelman. Um, and in the roster, Hideki Matsuyama, Tom Kim, Mito Pereira, Taylor Pendrick, Saibu Kim, Christian Ziedenhout, Sanjay M, Corey Connors, Adam Scott, Sebastian Munoz, Cam Davis, and Kyung Hoo Lee. And the U.S. team roster, the captain is Davis Lowe III. And the roster, Patrick Cantley, Justin Thomas, Xander Shoffley, Cam Young, Colin Morikawa, jo- Jordan Spieth, Sam Burns, Scotty Scheffler, Tony Finau, Billy Horschel, Kevin Kisner, and Max Homa. 
Um, U.S. is a minus 700 favorite, and internationals is seven, plus 750. The draw is 20 to 1. Um, USA is going to run away with it. And I mean run away with it. Um, so let's go with an alternative correct point score. Um, USA 20 to 10 or better is plus 185. I think that's good value getting that at just under 2 to 1. I'm going to take that as like a bet for the 2022 President's Cup. And I think that uh, USA is just going to dominate this tournament. All right, now I'm going to do my NHL I'll paint my flag segment. Um, I did NBA yesterday. I did Major League Baseball Monday, and I did NFL on Tuesday. But I did the other the uh, latter two sports. I mentioned football and baseball at the power rankings. But I don't want to give away preseason power rankings yet because there's still moves to be made in the offseason for these respective teams, and guys can get caught or injured or whatever. So without further ado, here we go. Um, I'm going to go in alphabetical order by team like I did for the NBA yesterday. The Anaheim Ducks. I'll paint my flag that Trevor Zagras will post a 30-50 season. I think he'll have 30 goals and 50 assists. We're going to get him to 80 points. But I think there's a possibility that he eclipses that as well. The Arizona Coyotes. I'll paint my flag that Jacob Chytrin will be traded this season. Um, The Coyotes are just garbage. And Chytrin has a lot of value. And I think that... Some of these contenders are going to be after him. The Boston Bruins. I'll paint my flag that Patrice Bergeron eclipses 70 points for the first time in four seasons. So the 18-19 season was the last time he did it. I think he'll do it. And I know he is somebody that um, really um, is on the uh, back end of his career. But I think he has one more great year left. The Buffalo Sabres. I'll paint my flag that Don Granado will be fired during the season. The Sabres are just a mess, as we all know. Um, they're still the Sabres until further notice. The Calgary Flames. I'll paint my flag that Jonathan Huberdeau will have more points than both Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk. Huberdeau had the year of his life last year. Now he goes to Calgary on the revamped Flames team. And I think he's going to have a monster season. The Carolina Hurricanes. I'll paint my flag that Sebastian Ajo will have a career high in points. I love Sebastian Ajo. He's one of my favorite players to watch in the league. I think he'll have an amazing season. The Chicago Blackhawks. I'll paint my flag that Patrick Kane will finally be traded. If you had to guess where. um, Ooh. If he goes to the Rangers, then the Rangers would be the favorite to win the Stanley Cup. But I just feel like it's too good to be true for the Rangers. I mean, could it be the Islanders? Could it be the Florida Panthers? Could it be even somebody in the West? I don't think it's going to be the Avalanche. No way. Could it be Vegas? Could it be the Kraken? Could it be it could be anybody? Could be somebody that's trying to make that leap from bad to good even. Not from very good or borderline Stanley Cup contender to favorites to win the cup like the Rangers, but could be anybody. Um The Colorado Avalanche. I'll paint my flag that Alexander Georgiev will have a better Goals against average than Darcy Kemper. Um, Yurigabs just on a better team than Kemper, plain and simple. The Columbus Blue Jackets. I'll paint my flag that the team finally breaks up their goalie duo. I think that Jonas Corpusal will be traded somewhere and it'll be Elvis Merklins' job full time. The Dallas Stars. I'll paint my flag that Jake Ottinger will be an all star this season. He was fabulous. In the postseason last year. Especially in that game 7. And I think that. He'll break through into the all-star team this year. 
the Detroit Red Wings. I'll paint my flag that Alex Nijelkovic will have a goals against average under 2.75. He had a disappointing year last year. I think he'll bounce back. The Edmonton Oilers. I'll paint my flag that Jack Campbell flops. Um, Goalies always flop in Edmonton. I don't know why. The Florida Panthers. I'll paint my flag that Matthew Kachuk does not eclipse 100 points. I think he'll have a good season. But there's a lot of great players on that Panthers team. Maybe he gets hurt or something. But I don't think Kachuk will get to uh, pass 100 points. The Los Angeles Kings. I'll pay my flag that the team won't reach the postseason. Um, This team, I think, was lucky to make the playoffs last year. Jonathan Quick had a turn-back-the-clock type of season. I think there's teams in the Pacific Division that are bound to bounce back. And L.A., I think, took advantage of some of those teams. And I think there's another team in the Ducks who I think could make a big jump and supplant the Kings. The Minnesota Wild. I'll paint my flag that Kevin Fiala has more than 100 points. Um, I think Fiala will have a great season. He really, I think, is a player on the up. And I think he'll have a great year this year. The Montreal Canadiens. I'll paint my flag that Nick Suzuki... Will eclipse 80 points. I think being named the captain is a big deal for him. And I think he'll have a great year. The Nashville Predators. I'll paint my flag that Juicy Soros will have a goals against average under 2.45. I think he'll be better than he was a year ago. I love Juicy Sorrow. Um, and he'll certainly be in play to win the Vezina. The New Jersey Devils. I'll paint my flag that Jack Hughes will have 20 or more points than anybody else on the team. I just don't trust a lot of guys on this team. I know Nico Hischier's a solid player. I know they have some other solid players, but I think this is a big year for Jack Hughes. The New York Islanders. I'll paint my flag that they will be a top three team in the Metropolitan Division this season, barring an injury. So... I'm going to pick them to finish in the top three in the division, but if there is a big injury or a random trade or something that I'm sniffing wrong in the preseason or in, in training camp, then this prediction is voided. The New York Rangers. I'll paint my flag that Igor Shesterkin will have an even better season than his Vezina Trophy season last year. I think... The sky's the limit for Igor. I think he's the best goalie in the world. And the Ranger fans are now spoiled because they had Henrik Lundqvist and now they have Igor Shesterkin. The Ottawa Senators. I'll paint my flag that DJ Smith will be fired this season. Um, Expectations are high for their Senators, but I just think that they're not a top four team in this division. The Philadelphia Flyers. I'll paint my flag. That John Tortorella is one done in Philadelphia if his team doesn't make the postseason. This is a dysfunctional mess of an organization. They go for it each and every year. And the Metro's loaded. And I personally think that Torts is one and done if they don't make the playoffs. The Pittsburgh Penguins. I'll paint my flag that Jake Gensel will be in the top 10 in goals. I think he is an elite goal scorer, a great piece around Sidney Crosby, and he'll have a good goal scoring season. The San Jose Sharks. I'll paint my flag that the team trades away some core players. Um, I just think that this team needs some more youth. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Brent Burns and Eric Carlson and some of the older veterans on this team are elsewhere. The St. Louis Blues, I'll paint my flag that Vladimir Tarasenko will score 40 or more goals. I think he's poised for a big season. Um, I know he requested a trade a while ago, but I think he withdrew the trade request, which is good. The Seattle Kraken, I'll paint my flag that Chris Drieger plays more games than Philip Grubauer. Drieger was better than Grubauer last year. And I don't know if, if this is going to be because Grubauer gets hurt or if he gets benched. But I just have a feeling about Drieger. The Tampa Bay Lightning. I'll paint my flag that Steven Stamkos will have less than 90 points. Um, Stamkos 
Um, really doesn't have great um, scoring seasons than you would expect. I know a lot of it's because of injury. But I know this team's really loaded. And I just don't think that he will um, get to uh, 90 points. The Toronto Maple Leafs. I'll paint my flag that this team will finally break up their core in some way. One of those big-name players will be traded either midseason or at the, at the draft in June. The Vancouver Canucks. I'll paint my flag that JT Miller will not lead the team in scoring. I think that Elias Pettersson will have a big season this year. And I think he has a legit shot. To lead the Canucks in scoring. Um, and JT Miller just got the big contract. And you know how I feel about guys getting paid. The Vegas Golden Knights. I'll paint my flag that this team will return to the postseason after missing last season. Um, they bring in Phil Kessel. will be a depth piece. I think Jack Eichel will be better. Um I think some of their other players will be better. I understand Robin Leonard's hurt, but maybe they're the team that goes and acquires a goalie. Maybe Jonas Corpusalo. Maybe um, one of those Kraken guys, amazingly enough. Um, but I think they go out and acquire a goalie. Most likely one of those guys from Columbus. And they'll be back. The Washington Capitals. I'll paint my flag. That Alexander Ovechkin, who is 114 goals away from tying Wayne Gretzky. 57 is that halfway point to uh, tie Gretzky at where he is now. I'm going to say that he gets very close. With, he gets within five of that halfway point. So... Rather than 114 goals away, I'm going to say he will be 62 goals away come season's end. So he'll be within almost 60 goals of Wayne Gretzky. And the Winnipeg Jets, I'll paint my flag that Blake Wheeler will be traded. I thought it was very suspicious of them to take away his captaincy. So that's why I'm making this prediction. All right, so there you have it for NHL's version of I'll Paint My Flag. All right, now I'll move on to The Masked Singer. Um, it was a fun show last night. Um, season 8 premiere. Um, very different rules for this year. Um, 26 contestants, which is a lot for this show. This is the most they've ever had. So that's really good. Um, but... They're changing it up this season. One person moves on and three get unmasked or the rest get unmasked. So there are four contestants tonight. Three were unmasked and one survived. So I think you'll see that for a while. And I think there's going to be um, some shows. So you would think that there's going to be six shows of... Four contestants, that's 24. And then they'll throw in two extra contestants in one of the next five remaining shows. So some of the shows will have five with four on masks. And don't forget, there's always doubles and whatnot. So maybe he meets 26 in terms of uh, maybe there's 24 characters and there's a couple doubles. So first up, Harp. There was a gate. There um were Flowers. She talks about how she auditioned for the biggest show, but was turned down. Um, She talks about being casted um, and being an outsider. And this person performed perfect by Pink. She was outstanding. And then Nick Cannon gave out an onstage clue. And... He asked, what award were you most proud of? And she said that she was most proud of an award for comedy because um, she shared it with her besties. Um, My first guess and my current guess for Harp 
Jennifer Hudson, former American Idol contestant, um, lost out to Fantasia in season three. Um, and ironically enough, uh, Jenny McCarthy guessed Fantasia, and she also said Jordan Sparks. But Jordan Sparks and Fantasia both won American Idol. Robin went with Queen Latifah, and Ken Jeong was thinking like me and said Jennifer Hudson, and I think he had the best guest of uh, the episode. And he had the worst guest of the episode, too, but he also had the best guest of the episode, um, or one of the best. And then Nicole said that that was Ken Jeong's best guest ever. So she must agree with Ken. Next up went Hedgehog. Um, there is a lizard. Um, there's the Eiffel Tower. There's a playbook, a guitar, a cardinal. Talks about celebrity following. There is an end. Uh, there was an H on his jacket. And he performed Love Me Do by the Beagles. Um, and in the onstage clue, um, Hedgehog said he was pr- proud that he won a Tony and a Grammy. My guess for Hedgehog, Martin Short. This sounds like somebody older, a raspy voice. He heard an accent. Um, Ken Jung got the no Ken no chant because after he guessed Ringo Starr initially, he guessed Elton John. Which, no way. Robin Thick guessed Eric Idle. Jenny McCarthy said John Cleese and Michael Keaton. And Nicole went with Bill Nye, the science guy. Third, Hummingbird. There is a football field, a mic. Talks about having a connection with Shaq. There are cleats. Um, there are footballs. A scoreboard. Um, talks about... Um, being in the Super Bowl, and then he had two rings, and there was a cowboy hat. This person performed I Don't Want to Be by Gavin DeGraw. Um, his onstage clue um, says that all of his awards won were out of this world, but he loved the silver awards and said this doesn't mean second place. My first thought on Hummingbird was Patrick Mahomes because I saw a lot of red. It talks about being in the Super Bowl. But the more I thought into this and saw a cowboy hat, a mic, this person does broadcasting now. There's two rings. And this person won two rings and obviously was in the Super Bowl. I think this is the one and only Eli Manning. Somebody who I guessed to be on the show on yesterday's podcast, ironically enough. So maybe my guess of Eli is wishful thinking, but we'll see. Um, Ken Jeong got a no Ken no chin because he guessed Peyton Manning, but then he proceeds to guess Tom Brady. And that guess does make a lot of sense because he missed some training camp. And was had time away from the team, which um, had people suspicious. So um, Ken... Might be on the something there. Robin said Deion Sanders, which isn't bad. And Jenny didn't even go football. She went with um, Rob Thomas, and then she said Chad Kroger. And then last but not least, the night, um, there were outer space clues. There was a police badge, two chairs. There was a cassette tape that, with co- like, that said covers on it. And then Shakespeare was in the clue. And this person... Performed putting on the Ritz. Um, not the taco version. Um, and I like the version by Taco better. He performed the version by Fred Astore. Um, his on stage clue. So that he loves all of his awards, especially the big awards. Um, because I saw two chairs and it made me think if it was that it was a talk show host, I went with David Letterman. Um, K 
Ken Jong said David Hasloff. Jenny McCarthy said William Shatner. And Robin said Jerry Springer and Weird Al Yankovic. First to be unmasked was The Night. Um, my guest was David Letterman. Ken went with David Hasselhoff. Jenny said William Shatner. Nicole said John Lithgow. And Robin went with Weird Al. And who was it? William Shatner. So Jenny is the first correct guess of the season. The second unmasking was Hedgehog. I said Martin Short. Nicole went with Bill Nye. Ken had the worst guess of the episode with Elton John. Robin said Eric Idle. Jenny said John Cleese. And who was it? Eric Idle. So Robin correct. So um, Robin gets one and um, Jenny gets one. And Will Arnett makes an appearance and promotes Lego Masters. Um, but and also he uh, like in, helps introduce the king of and the potential king or queen of the episode. And they announce who moves on. And Nick says the person that moves on is the queen of the mass singer, the harp. Of course, she was easily the best performer. And we find out who Hummingbird is on the episode next week. Which um ended it disappointing for me because I was excited to see who um, Hummingbird was. Um, But... Good first episode, to say the least. I feel pretty confident in who Harp is. Hummingbird, I think, is a little bit of a wild card. Maybe it is Tom Brady. Who knows? All right, now move on to Survivor. Um, it was an interesting first episode of the season. Um, we have the three tribes, six per tribe. Um, so... Um, First up was the uh, reward challenge as uh, two tribe members raced into the jungle for crates and two other tribe members then retrieved the boat full of crates from the ocean. And then the last two members would put together an ice cube in which one tribe member would climb to retreat a flint hanging above them. And the first to obtain the flint one as well as a pot and um, a sheet for their tribe. And the two losing tribes would have to uh, complete a savvy or sweat challenge at camp within a time to limit to earn their supplies. Vessi won the reward. So good for Vessi. I like that Vessi tribe. I like all the tribes, but I think Vessi is probably my favorite tribe. And then the immunity challenge... Um, Everybody um, had the obstacle course to do with one person opening the way at each obstacle. Um, and the first to get to the table game portion got their choice of one of three games. The second got the pick between one of the remaining two. And the first two tribes to complete their chosen table won immunity. While the losing tribe had to forfeit their flint. Coco and Vessi won the challenge. As um, Baca went to Tribal Council, um, Gabler wanted to use his shot in the dark, but he was talked out of it. And um, then the vote happened, um, and the person that was eliminated was Mariah who all her tribemates voted for, as she voted for Owen. So um, I thought that Mariah or Owen was going to get voted out. I just didn't know which one. I think that um, Mariah was a solid player, but um, I think that Owen was a better fit with the tribe, with the two girls and the two other gentlemen. So uh, Mariah goes home and... It's going to be an interesting episode next week. One hour show next week, obviously. So, um, won't be as long. All right, news and notes for today. Um, we have a lot to talk about. We're going to start with basketball, actually, because 
Um, a big story broke. Um, Ime Yudoka may face a possible significant dis- disciplinary action for violation of organizational guidelines. His job is not in jeopardy, and the suspension length could come as early as Thursday. And Woj just reported that Ime faces a year-long suspension after a consensual relationship with a female staff member. And Shams reported that it was an intimate and consensual relationship with a female member of the team's staff, which is not great. And that is a crazy suspension, something you never would have thought of. And um, there must be more to this. He must have, like, did something really bad to the girl because that's a really long suspension. There's definitely more to this, but they don't want to say it. And assistant coach John Mazzula is likely to become Boston's interim coach with um, Udoka potentially suspended for the season. So absolutely bonkers of a story that broke last night that um, everybody was talking about after uh, Aaron Judge uh, did not tie uh, Roger Maris. Um, And then the big NBA story from yesterday before the uh, Udoka story is that Robert Sarver announces that he is starting the process of finding buyers for both the Suns and the Mercury. Um, This, I think, had to happen. I think he knew he was facing a big suspension, so he caved. And um, that's just going to be interesting to see um, who's a potential buyer and how much that team is worth. And then it's reported that the Suns are extremely desirable as executives always believed that Phoenix would be a monster free agent destination with the right ownership amid the Sarver news. Like, that is, um, I think, going to happen. We'll just see when he sells the team. And um, it's a good look on the Mercury as well. I mean... Everyone just focuses on the Suns, but for the WNBA, it's good as well. Um, And then it was reported that Adam Silver and other NBA governors convinced Sarver that it would be best to sell the team, which doesn't surprise me. Um, So... A trade happened in the NBA about a half an hour ago as the Pistons acquired Bojan Bogdanovich from the Utah Jazz for Kelly Olenek and Saban Lee. That is an absolute rocket steal for the Pistons. Unbelievable. Bojan is going to fit really nicely with that team. And Utah got nothing for Bojan. Like, you would think that a pick would have been thrown in, but... Great job by the Pistons by going out and getting him. And then it was reported by Shams yesterday evening that the Lakers and Pacers talked about a trade as L.A. turned down Indiana's asking price of two unprotected first amid Turner healed talks. So um, that's really interesting. And you would think that they're going to trade those guys because I predicted on the show yesterday in uh, – the uh, I'll Pay My Flag segment that the Pacers were going to be the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes. The Knicks were surprised by um, the Cavs acquiring Donovan Mitchell as they thought Evan Mobley's contract would limit Cleveland's ability to go in for Mitchell. Hmm. And then there's talks about Obi Toppin having a larger role on the Knicks this season, which should be the case. He really um, showed some flashes last year, and even in the postseason several years ago. Um, 
SGA to miss the start of camp. And she has a grade two left MCL sprain and will miss the start of, of training camp. Um, that's not great. And Lonzo Ball will undergo a second left knee surgery and be reevaluated in four to six weeks. That is absolutely brutal for the Bulls. Football. Um, Justin Herbert is day-to-day -day after um, Brandon Staley says he's feeling more comfortable after suffering the fracture to his rib cartilage. I don't think he's going to play Sunday. I won't be surprised if we don't see him for another three weeks to a month. Joe Burrow deletes social media as the Bengals are trying to avoid 0-3. I don't blame him. Local barbecue restaurant in New Orleans places lifetime ban on Mike Evans after um, the Bucks Saints brawl. Yikes. Um, he's officially out on Sunday against the Packers after his appeal as well. Um, Amon Ra... St. Brown continues to keep his receipts of guys drafted before him, including uh, Dayami Brown. He's just really cocky at this point. Kenny Galladay says that he came here to play as he criticizes his reduced role after playing two snaps against the Panthers. I really don't agree with it or like it. Well, guess what? You were awful last year, and you weren't even brought in by this uh, front office. Kenny Galladay is going to get traded at the deadline for sure. If not, he'll be released. And in some baseball, Jose Altuve, day-to-day -day with elbow discomfort. Um, he just needs to be ready for October at this point. And then uh, Albert Poulos breaks up a no-no by of uh, Blake Snell last night as Blake Snell was going for a no-hitter. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. There's one I absolutely loved. I think this bit me in the ass in the past, but I don't care. I'm going with it. I am taking um, the over in the Twins Royals game. Over 8 at minus 114. I'm actually going to lay a half unit on it. Actually, no, that's a lie. I'm going to lay a quarter on it because... Um, I was going to lay a half, but I um, want to uh, sprinkle around a little bit for football. So, half unit on the over eight between the Twins and the Royals quarter unit. My bad. All right, so that's it for the show. Be back tomorrow recapping um, Thursday Night Football and college football and looking ahead to the weekend ahead and obviously baseball as well. Then we have Major League Soccer to talk about, golf, NASCAR, News and notes, best bet, and obviously the Fab Five in each college football and in the NFL. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.